Today I'm going to show you a 1996 action thriller film titled Ransom. Be ready for spoilers ahead. The movie begins with airline owner Tom Mullen hosting a party at his swanky New York City apartment. The party is being held to unveil his latest commercial, which gives background information on how Tom became a self-made multimillionaire airline entrepreneur. The scene cuts to the group of kidnappers setting up a room designed to hold a hostage. Later, Tom and his wife Kate, and their son Sean, attend a science fair in Central Park that Kate is a judge at. During this fair, a group of criminals, including Maurice Connor, a caterer for the Mullins, criminal brothers Clark and Cubby Barnes, and tech expert Miles Roberts, kidnap Tom's son Sean. They throw him in the back of a white van and drive off. Tom and Kate quickly realize their son is missing and frantically begin to search for him. The kidnappers get in touch with the Mullins with a video message. The video is of Sean, blindfolded and chained up to a bed. An electronically disguised individual demands a ransom of $2 million and threatens to kill Sean if the police or the media become aware of the situation. Despite the warning message against doing so, Tom and Kate decide to alert someone. They contact the FBI, who arrive disguised as a group of carpenters renovating the Mullins penthouse under the leadership of Agent Lonnie Hawkins. Hawkins asks whether Tom and Kate are willing to negotiate or comply with the ransom demands. He discovers that they have already prepared two suitcases for handoff, awaiting further instructions from the kidnappers. Meanwhile, at the Brooklyn hideout, Cubby feels sympathy for the kidnapped Sean and decides to visit a nearby grocery to purchase some videotapes and cereal for him. Cubby is unaware that at the same store, the NYPD is conducting an investigation on a detained thief who tried to rob the place. As Detective Jimmy Shaker and his partner interview the thief, he eyes Cubby suspiciously. After seeing his partner and the detained thief off, Jimmy tails Cubby to the kidnapper's hideout. He sneaks in, passes the locked room with Sean inside, and rouses Cubby by placing a gun to his head. As it turns out, Jimmy is actually the ringleader of the kidnappers and chastises Cubby for his overt recklessness. Fortunately, none of the other cops at the bodega found it suspicious that someone with a long criminal record was buying kid cereal. Back at Tom's penthouse, he confesses to Hawkins that a former union head of the machinist union may have had an involvement with the kidnapping of his son. Tom confides that he bribed the union president to call off a strike, and the president went to jail while Tom escaped prosecution. Hawkins arranges a jailhouse meeting between Tom and the union leader in prison, but it is apparent from the meeting that the former union president had nothing to do with the kidnapping. Shortly thereafter, Jimmy calls, using a scrambler to disguise his voice, with instructions regarding the drop-off of the ransom money. While on the phone, the FBI hit a major snag when they are unable to get a lock on the kidnapper's location due to technical scrambling on Jimmy's part. The FBI suggests that their agent make the drop, but Tom insists he does it himself. He's also set up with a wire to record any conversations. Tom reaches a specific street location, and his car's cellular phone then directs him to a gym. Jimmy instructs Tom to take the money with him and dive into the gym's swimming pool to retrieve a locker room key. This move short-circuits the wire Tom is wearing, destroying the FBI's planted mechanism. Tom then discovers a locker and a radio, which instructs him to change into the clothes provided in the locker, and place the money in two large duffel bags before heading to a parked car outside to drive to the drop-off point. This leaves the suitcases in the gym and out of the FBI's reach. Tom drives on as the sun goes down, not noticing that Jimmy is following him a few cars behind. Over the radio, Jimmy mocks Tom, saying that he seems to have no problems with buying his way out of tight situations, such as the one with the union leader. When it seems that none of Tom's questions or requests to speak to his son are being met, he pulls off the side of the road, though too late for Jimmy to notice. After a while, the voice on the radio grows fainter, and Tom now realizes that Jimmy was following him. Pulling back onto the road, the signal grows stronger, and Jimmy instructs Tom to turn off toward an upcoming rock quarry, where he will turn over the money and receive an address for his son. Arriving at the quarry, Cubby shows up on a bike, demanding the money. However, when Tom asks for the address, Cubby ignores him and struggles for the money. As this goes on, an FBI and SWAT team shows up in two helicopters, preparing to capture Cubby. Cubby takes the money and tries to flee, but the SWAT team chases him while firing at them, wounding one of them. As the police rappel down to the ground, one of the snipers in the helicopters takes a well-placed shot that hits Cubby in the neck, knocking him off the bike. Tom goes over to Cubby, but he is mortally wounded and dies without giving up the address. Tom is furious, blaming the FBI for killing the only known link to his son. However, Hawkins pacifies him by explaining that identifying the drop man does give them a lead. It turns out Cubby is a petty thief and he runs a lot with his brother Clark, who is a much higher fish in the criminal underworld. The detectives are convinced that finding Clark might lead them to Sean. At the hideout, Clark is furious over the death of his younger brother, he and Maurice Connor are in total agreement to simply kill the boy and give up. However, Jimmy angrily reprimands both and insists that the ransom is still going to happen. Back at Tom's penthouse, the media has learned about the drop-off and Sean's kidnapping, and they are now broadcasting the details. Jimmy makes another call to Tom, giving him new instructions on where to drop off the money this time. Tom attempts to follow the orders, 
However, after listening to Jimmy's exhausting instructions, he changes his mind. Tom tells Jimmy to turn to the local news and watch it for the next few hours before disconnecting the call. Tom then goes to the news station, where their broadcast is interrupted for a special report from Tom. Seated behind a desk, with the $2 million ransom laid out around him, Tom then delivers a message to the kidnappers, he will not pay the ransom. Instead, he has decided to use the ransom money as a bounty for information that leads to the arrest or death of the kidnapper. Tom claims that the kidnapper will never get his ransom money and will lift the reward if his son is let go. Tom goes back to his shocked wife and Hawkins, who have never heard of such a tactic. Tom successfully persuades his wife that this is the most effective plan to retrieve their son, he believes, based on Cubby's initial behavior, that the kidnappers intend to murder their son once they receive the ransom. Jimmy is losing control of his crew, who now want to get rid of the boy more than ever because a bounty has been placed on their heads. Desperate, Jimmy sets up a new plan and hopes to rein in Tom's plan. He sends a note to Kate with the stipulation that she appear at a renovated church without her husband's knowledge. Jimmy puts on a face mask and ambushes her, and he threatens to cut Sean into pieces unless his ransom demands are met. He leaves Kate shaken, along with Sean's shirt covered in bloodstains. Upon returning home, Kate's confidence in Tom's plan starts to waver. Hawkins capitalizes on this, striving to instigate conflict in order to secure the payment of the ransom, a strategy he believes offers the best chance for Sean's safe return. However, Tom has other ideas, leaving his apartment building and walking right out into the midst of the media gathered on his doorstep. Tom informs them that he is now doubling the reward to $4 million. Jimmy then calls up Tom again, allowing Sean to speak a few words and then demanding that Tom pay the ransom. However, neither man is willing to give the other the upper hand, leading to a heated shouting match. Jimmy tells Tom that he's going to kill Sean now and fires off a gun at the nearby wall to bluff Tom and Kate into thinking he's killed Sean. The call abruptly ends, leaving Tom and Kate filled with dread. Jimmy's plan appears to have fallen apart, and as Clark and Miles load their white van to leave, Jimmy goes to the nearby laundromat to think. Back in the house, Maris Connor contemplates killing Sean again. Jimmy formulates a way to salvage the situation for at least himself, he pulls out his radio and contacts his dispatcher to make a distress call. He then goes outside, flashes his badge and attempts to arrest Miles and Clark. Realizing that they've been double-crossed, Miles and Clark attempt to drive off, but not before Jimmy murders them both. After planting a fired gun on Miles, Maris catches him off guard and shoots him in the shoulder. Despite Maris being his girlfriend, Jimmy manages to shoot her as well. As police units race to the scene, Jimmy staggers back into the house and plants himself next to Sean's bedside, radioing in that he has found the kidnapped boy. He remains in this position until the emergency service unit breaches the hideout and discovers him. Soon after, the discovery alerts Tom and Kate, allowing them to reunite with their son. Tom thanks Jimmy for saving his son's life as they load him onto an ambulance. Over the course of the next few days, Jimmy is hailed as a hero by his peers and the public. At the Mullins, Sean is still struggling to adjust to life after his kidnapping, he fears the darkness, and his eyes, blindfolded for nearly the entire kidnapping, have yet to acclimate to natural light. A couple days afterwards, Jimmy visits Tom's penthouse to collect the $4 million reward. Tom complies, and they go to his study room where he begins to write out a check. Jimmy poses a challenging question to Tom, why didn't he just pay the ransom? To which Tom responds by explaining that the kidnapper was human garbage and, in the end, he would have likely paid 10 times the reward to secure his son's return. As they talk, Sean wanders into Tom's eyeline off to the right, and upon seeing a bit of Jimmy's face and hearing his voice, Sean freezes up and urinates down the side of his pants. Tom notices this in his peripheral vision and remembers that some news reports suggested that the police did not consider Maris to be the primary kidnapper, but rather that she might have had an accomplice who managed to escape. Sean quietly leaves the scene as Tom goes over and presents the check to Jimmy. However, Jimmy has noticed Tom's hesitation and now figures the businessman is onto him. Jimmy then demands that Tom call his bank and wire the $4 million directly to his account, producing a gun to emphasize the threat. Tom counters by offering to take Jimmy to his bank and wire the money from there, after which Tom will allow Jimmy to be flown anywhere. Jimmy reluctantly accepts this but still threatens Tom that one day he very well could return to murder Sean. The two leave the apartment, and Tom makes a call on his car phone. However, under the guise of arranging a jet for Jimmy, Tom has actually reached out to Hawkins and FBI investigators. Tom mentions that they'll be stopping by his bank before heading to the airport. Jimmy suspects that Tom may be attempting to double-cross him, but before he can turn the speakerphone on, Tom has ended the call. After exchanging pleasantries with a few police officers outside the bank, Tom and Jimmy enter and receive a royal welcome. Tom proceeds to wire the money through Jimmy's account, all of this is done to buy time, as the FBI has already notified the NYPD about Jimmy's whereabouts. Jimmy realizes this when they emerge from the bank and the police officers from earlier try to detain him. Jimmy pulls his gun and shoots them both before darting into traffic. Tom quickly follows and attempts to subdue Jimmy. Eventually, the fight spills into the front of a storefront. 
Tom grabs Jimmy's gun and holds it towards him, just as the police arrive and demand his surrender. Jimmy, though badly wounded, reaches for his backup weapon and ankle holster. As he draws, Tom fires once and Hawkins fires thrice, all four bullets hitting Jimmy and killing him. Soon after, Kate shows up and gives her husband a hug, they both walk off as the police secure the scene. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this.